All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One drama. Total Wolf has admitted there will be a rivalry between George Russell and Lewis Hamilton for the upcoming F1 season, but he says he will try and ensure as best he possibly can that it does not damage the team or either driver's chances in the championship. Does depend, though, largely on how successful the W14 is. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. Plenty of drama today. Starting again with Mr. Mohamed Ben Salim from the FIA. So someone dug up a comment he made back in 2000. 2001. I do wonder whether it was somebody from Liberty Media looking into this because we know that right now the Formula 1 ownership aren't so happy with the FIA after he made those comments about the inflated price tag on Formula 1 a few days ago. Now someone came up with this comment that he made all the way back in like this is over two decades ago at this point but nonetheless he made a statement along the lines of he doesn't like women who think they are smarter than men. Definitely an interesting comment but you know it's one of those things that people are always digging up things are back in the day nowadays. Who knows whether this is taken out of context or whatever. But of course, this then hits the media. People are flaming the guy, maybe for good reason. And now the FIA are forced into a response. So this guy can't say out the news for, you know, at least a couple of days. Every couple of days he's back in there, someone's flaming him, and yeah, I'm not going to deny, but good reason on this count and other counts as well. So um, yeah, there was an archived website from 2001 that the FIA have said that that does not reflect the president's beliefs. This is the full wording on it when there was a version of his old website saying he does not like women who think they're smarter than men. And FIA spokesperson says he has a strong record on promoting women and equality in sports, which he is happy to be judged on. That was a central part of his manifesto and actions taken this year and the many years he has served as vice president for sport prove this. So the newspaper that reported on this said that Mohamed Ben Suleyem had mentioned that his likes and dislikes are pretty simple. I love the desert. I love meeting real people. But he doesn't like talking about money, nor do I like women who think they're smarter than men, for they are not in truth. So, you know, absolutely quality stuff. And, um, and then the FAA spokesperson says, the remarks from 2000 and one do not reflect the president's belief. So wouldn't be a day without some drama between Mr. Ben Soliev and pretty much anyone else in Formula 1, it seems at the moment. There's also this big story coming out of Red Bull lately that a partnership with Ford is potentially looming. And this might be why there's been some rumours that they're going to change up their livery a little bit. We saw them teasing it a couple of days ago, right, that they might not have the traditional Red Bull livery they've had for the last few years. That might involve some sort of partnership with Ford. There's rumours emerging that the reason why Red Bull are launching their car in New York City as our Alpha Tauri shortly afterwards is because it's related to Ford, obviously a massive American brand. A couple of different insiders are suggesting that his contacts believe that Ford are sending some content creators and some influencers there on the same day. It sounds a bit too much to just be a coincidence. And uh, then there's a natural rumor now coming out of motorsport that talks between Red Bull and Ford are at an advanced stage. The deal could be confirmed relatively soon before the start of the 2023 season. Ford is apparently on track to have its name on the Red Bull engines from 2026 onwards. So pretty interesting stuff. Don't know if they're actually going to be involved at all in the development there or whether it's just kind of an in-name only type thing. But uh, yeah, Ford getting involved has been rumoured for quite some time. And actually, um, the Ford Motorsports director responded to some rumours only just yesterday, stating that it requires consideration, but they're not saying any more yet. But yeah, rumour has it, Ford with Red Bull could be a thing as Porsche Red Bull was meant to be a few months ago. Now it might be Ford and that might dictate one of the directions they could take with their livery. Let's talk then about the driver pairings. Of course, these are all the grids for the upcoming season with the respective team bosses for the individual teams. Ferrari, we got a lot out of them yesterday on their car, the future of their team and all that stuff. Yesterday in a video we discussed nothing more from Fred Vasseur yet. All he says yesterday is the car will be red. So, you know, I'm sure we could have probably guessed that one. But he also said they're not going to choose a number one driver. But if we have to take action, they will take action. Now, Mercedes generally have the same philosophy, like let them race at the start of the season. If it gets to a point where there's a big championship fight on and one driver needs to support the other one, they will facilitate those discussions as they have done with Bottas over the last few years before Russell came to the team. But Russell came straight in and beat Lewis Hamilton his first year. You can talk about performances and qualifying pace and race pace and good bad luck across the two of them, but nonetheless, the numbers speak for themselves at the end of the day. Now, George Russell said there's no reason to have conflict with Lewis Hamilton, discussing that last year there probably would have been a different dynamic if they were consistently fighting for one twos at races but um, it kind of feels like we are in this together, fighting back to the front of the grid. Now, if they do get back to the front of the grid, that's where the questions remain, because Hamilton hasn't really had a challenge from a teammate over the last few years, since 2017 when Bottas came in and Rosberg retired. It's been a rather different story at Mercedes, where Hamilton has pretty much dominated. Okay, Bottas has his good weekends and his good qualifying performances, but um, isn't quite at the same level that Russell is seemingly at the moment to actually challenge Hamilton over the course of an entire season. That's where the question remains, because a few years ago, there 
there was massive drama in the Mercedes camp between Hamilton and Rosberg. Has Hamilton matured now more than he was then? Is Russell a different character than Rosberg? Does it depend in large part on how competitive their car is? I think that's certainly arguable as well. But Toto Wolff has been asked this question, right? Because Mercedes are intending to get back to the top. And having two, I think as even Toto Wolff has described, alpha drivers can cause some friction and some problems as we've seen in the past. And why some teams, let's just say Red Bull, decide not to even deal with those issues and um, have a quite a clear number one, number two dynamic within their team. But Toto Wolff comments on this, and this is the full quote that he says, Lewis is the best driver of all time alongside Schumacher in his Ferrari days. I would see Lewis and George on a par in 2022. George got out of a car that was certainly difficult to drive. He got into one that was certainly difficult to drive as well. So, of course, coming from Williams to Mercedes was arguably more of an advantage for George in terms of upgrading his car theoretically, rather than Hamilton going from a perfect car to the W13. It wasn't about who scored more points and beat the other. It was about developing a car together that was capable of winning. Then going on to say the following, they both have great respect for each other and both recognize the other's performance. That was a good constellation. Then he goes on to say a good dynamic between the drivers also depends on what the management sets them, what framework conditions we set for them and how the drivers interact with each other in terms of respect. I think we're in a good starting position because both drivers respect each other, respect each other humanly, but then stating I accept that there can be and probably will be, let's be honest here, a rivalry between our drivers. But this rivalry must never degenerate into a conflict that could damage the team. I would never allow that and I have never allowed that either. So this is where it comes back to a few years ago with the Rosberg Hamilton drama and at the time the cars were so good, Mercedes was so far ahead of the pack that the drama between the two drivers didn't really affect the team. They were going to win the constructors anyway. Their drivers were going to finish 1-2 anyway, even if they did take each other out at a couple of races per year. So that's the thing. The drama back then didn't really affect the team. Okay, the team wasn't happy when, you know, Rosberg and Hamilton were having their clashes and damaging each other's cars and races and all this. I mean, for example, here's a picture from back in Austria where Rosberg just didn't decide to turn into the corner. But um, also, of course, Spain that year as well, where Verstappen won his first race was a similar story. There was a few instances like this, even back in 2014, a lot of great races and some over the mark between the two of them. But um, it didn't really affect the team because the team won anyway, because their car was so much better. This year, though, it's going to be a different story. If their car is competitive and right to the front of the pack, it's highly likely to be a dominant car. I think that I'm hoping that there's no dominant car and we get Red Bull, Ferrari, even, you know, Thrust and Martin there. I think that's a bit ambitious. But, you know, at least throw Mercedes in there as well to have three cars fighting for wins pretty much every single weekend. That'd be fantastic. Probably wishful thinking. But I don't think anyone expects Mercedes to have a dominant car this season by any means, given the way the new regulations have started. So therefore, it becomes increasingly critical for Mercedes to ensure their drivers don't fight too hard. Because if they do have issues with each other, we've seen teammates collide in the past and it's obviously never going down well within the team, but also between the drivers, creating friction and, um, you know, obviously costing points for the team in terms of constructors and also for the drivers themselves. So there is an importance here for Mercedes to ensure that it doesn't devolve into too much of a rivalry. But then again, right, if both of the drivers are in the mix, okay, Verstappen will surely be up there, Leclerc should surely be up there. But if it's also Russell and Hamilton in the fight for the championship, things are going to get quite spicy, especially if they go to a Brazil or let's say they even go to a Zandvoort where they're very competitive this year, but not quite as good, but they actually are the fastest car. Things could get very spicy between the two of them, right? Are they going to settle for a one-two if their car happens to be the quickest on that weekend? If there are points to be fought for here for the championship fight? Because this past season, there was no championship fight for either of them. It was about fighting back to being in a competitive position for 2023. If they do feel like 10 races into the season, they're both in with a shot of the title, then things are going to get interesting. Now, I think Hamilton has probably matured a bit more than he was during the Rosberg days. I think that maybe the management there now is going to be better along those lines as well. But Russell is certainly not the driver to just roll over and take it and say, okay, Hamilton, yeah, you can have your eighth. I'll win it at some point down the line. Russell isn't that guy. Russell wants to beat Hamilton every single time he gets out there on track. And that's what makes him a great driver. And I think it might also spark something in Hamilton as well, because he's got a fair bit to prove this year, Hamilton, that in what he's hoping is going to be a more competitive car. We can actually still beat a teammate that is, well, competitive with him over the course of an entire season. So I think very interesting to see how this goes. Toto Wolff, of course, is going to say that, um, yeah, there's going to be no issues here. I'm going to ensure that it doesn't affect the situation at the team. But, um, you know, potentially a very interesting dynamic because none of the other top teams really, in my opinion, have two drivers that are on such a level playing field. And more than likely at Red Bull, more than likely at Ferrari, after 10 races in the season, one driver, probably Verstappen and Leclerc, might well have separated themselves anyway in terms of points 
and their teammates. Hamilton and Russell, I don't know what it's going to look like. But one could argue that it's probably going to be far more competitive. And if this is the case, then things could get rather interesting. So like he admits there will be a rivalry there. But whether that rivalry will affect the team depends probably in large part on how good their car is and how competitive the championship is. Toto Wolf said the other day that their simulation data says that they've gotten to the bottom of their problems. But there's no clear number from Mercedes in terms of how much time they're gaining. Ferrari reckon this year's car is a second quicker than last year's. Red Bull say they've got a load of good new ideas. So, you know, we'll see how competitive the cars are at the start of the season. But obviously there is some optimism coming out of that Mercedes camp as well. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments section below. Just one final cool graphic to close out the video here with was this. Total laps completed by the grid during their entire career. Alonso is creeping up on 20,000 laps completed. Then Hamilton at 17,600. Perez is third, then Bottas, then Hulkenberg. Verstappen in fifth with only 8,000. And then we go down to, of course, Sergeant and Piastri at zero, but Nick DeVries with only 53, of course, and Monza 2022. But very much enjoy your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.